operations to create, create civilian inmate labor prison camps inside military bases? Those are the questions. We have questions why under executive orders, the President of the United States sends $200 million to build Russian homes for Russian soldiers overseas. Thank you. I'd like to just get on to Mr. Yes, Fletcher. Sir. Another question on, on the, uh, in an interview with the Los Angeles Times on April 21st, you said that the, you told the Associated Press uh, that the American government has created weather tampering techniques so that the New World Order will be able to starve millions of Americans and to control the rest. Would you explain what you were trying to say? Well, it, it, what I was trying to say is exactly what I said. There is weather control techniques. We have a complete package on that, which I did not bring, but I certainly will see to it that it is brought in for the record. Number one, the entire patents on the equipment. Number two, Senator Claiborne Pell's complete statement and story of his own that not only does it exist, but that we even utilize it as far back as the Vietnam War. You might want to touch base That's with right, Senator but I, but Pell. I, I just want to repeat Speaking. before so, I turn to So yes, yes so but we do have all that information. That you're saying the government has created weather tampering techniques so that the quote, new world order will be able to starve millions of Americans. Worldwide. To, millions of Americans and to control the rest. Yes, sir, and that's my belief. As bizarre as that sounds, when if somebody had told me that that equipment even existed 10 years ago, I would have thought they were nuts, sir. And at this point in time, we have all the documents to prove it. And if you think that 85 tornadoes takes place in the middle of our growing area by simultaneous accident, I'm, I'm sorry. With the equipment that's already set up internationally, and as bizarre as that is, it is proven and documented. We will supply you with those documents. As bizarre as that is, I would say that weather wars, and this is uh, quoting actually Senator Claiborne Pell himself, that they are the greatest weapon ever created in the world, and that's the Senator's own statement. So yes, I do stand on that. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Cole. Uh, Senator Feinstein? He's not here. Pardon me, uh, Senator Thompson? <coughs> Mr. Johnson, uh, whether or not one agrees with your statement, I think you gave a very thoughtful statement, uh, thought-provoking as to what's, what you perceive to be going on um, in the country and the concerns. You mentioned uh, the problems, as you see, with our government. You talk about the tax rates being too high. You talk about uh, government being too big, too intrusive, and all those things, many of uh, many of which many of us are also concerned about and are trying to do something about it. You talked about uh, the British, uh, our revolution, other places around the world. But, you know, we couldn't vote King George out of office. Uh, the difference between us and other countries is that we do have a democratic society and one in which huge numbers of people don't even bother to vote. But we have an opportunity to change just about all the things that you listed that, that's a problem. I take it that you think that our system is broken down, our electoral process in some way is broken down. Either it's really not free and open or, or uh, maybe we shouldn't uh, go by democratic processes. Or What's, what's, uh, what's, your, what's your problem with, with working through the process to solve these problems? You know, there was an organization I believe came out back in September and said that the militia's aim was clearly the democratic process itself. And my response to that was that our aim was, our target was right on target, right around November the 8th, when a whole new Congress came in here. Fine, granted. Now, we advocate that more than everything, voting. But we seem to have a problem here during these campaigns when all of these wonderful politicians, God love them, say whatever they're going to say, and they get inside the beltway and everything is, how do we say, politics as usual. Now what's going on, as this trend continues, and you guys got to listen to this, you're pushing people's backs against the wall out there. We got people out there hungry like you're talking about, people out there starving, and people tired of getting terrorized by law enforcement. Well, I shouldn't say law enforcement. I will, I will support law enforcement whenever they support the law. I'll just call them enforcement. They're getting outright economically terrorized, socially terrorized. I mean, the political correctness is getting out of hand. 
That is why these people are, what they're doing, what this militia is now, it's a mindset. It's the civil rights movement of the 90s. It's people sitting there with don't tread on me stamped across their forehead. There's people drawing a line in their sand. That's what it is. Nobody's going to go out there and uh, shoot things. Nobody's going to go out there and blow up things. We're not, ba we're not baby killers. We're baby boomers. We're not terrorists. We're taxpayers. We're not extremists. We're just extremely ticked off at the way the government is deviating away from what's going on around here. And when I say we, as this militia, as this little covert group out there, no, it's everybody. Now just because you call you, just because you say we're going to form ourselves a militia, it doesn't make you the militia. What we stand here, what we stand for here is a constitution. That's it. All right, let me. <clears throat> okay, let me let me follow up on that a little we'll bit. We'll be disregarding the lights. So Senator Thompson may proceed as oh, he wishes. Thank you. I, I take it then, basically, you 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 think the system doesn't work. That uh, the problems that you see are not really being addressed. Uh, that, well, uh, that politicians promise one thing and deliver another. That's, you're not the first one to come up with that idea, it's I assure a, you. It's becoming a real general consensus around the country, and sir. You, and you, you basically believe that today that exists the way it always has. The, what exists? That situation exists. That the, no, I didn't the, say it always has. But today it is becoming more and more evident that it is existing. I see. What do you see the role of the militia in addressing that problem? You're right now, the militia, I look at it as a constitutional safety net. What you have are these groups who are organizing themselves in a manner that the Constitution will be preserved, no matter what kind of action this government or any other government takes. That's the little friction point you're going to run into there. Well, that gets into another Another question, I suppose. Bad laws are one thing, high taxes and, mm -hmm. and, and, and that sort of thing. But when you talk about a, a militia, you, you don't organize a militia to lower taxes, I assume. You, you organize a militia uh, that at least has some military capability. Is there concern that the government is, is, is forcefully and physically going to, to move against uh, individuals who are trying to um, assert